Rebecca, it seems that many scientists today have uh, taken a special interest in attacking philosophy as not only uh, uh, worthless, but um, uh, debilitating to doing good science under the theory that philosophy was and, and is pre-scientific. It was fine when we didn't have science, but now that we do have science, it gets in the way. One famous scientist told me, uh, uh, there are some good philosophers. Those are the ones who keep the bad philosophers off my back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to ask you for a name. But <laughs> um, yes, and there's a lot in the, the history of science and the history of philosophy to support that view, um, if you look at it very superficially, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, of, of course, um, all science began as philosophy. Uh, the word science didn't even come into existence until the 19th century it was called natural philosophy mm -hmm. and that covered physics and it covered uh, cosmology. And as science makes progress, the sphere of philosophy shrinks. There's no doubt about that. And so, you know, it's not only um, physics and cosmology, but biology has, you know, also split off. Psychology, a much more sure. recent uh, split off uh, computer science, logic. Logic, you know, was in the sphere of philosophy. Now it's a mathematical mm -hmm. um, subject. And uh, uh, philosophy of language, you can say linguistics, to, to a large extent, has taken that over. Anyway, so the, the questions that had been philosophical um, sometimes are proto-scientific questions. And it, it's simply a matter of science to develop the techniques, the methodology, so that it can usurp them and then make progress, you know, and turn them into empirical questions and then make progress. So that's generally the argument. And there's a, you know, the terminus of this ongoing problem is that, you know, as time increases, as long as we have enough research grants, scientific research grants, the National Science Foundation keeps giving us money, um, the set of philosophical problems will go to the null set. Um, well, Here's why that won't work, I would say. First of all, you need, you need philosophy to make that argument. You need quite sophisticated philosophy to make that argument. You need a way of demarcating science, for example, from other explanations. Who gave that to us? Who, who is the, the person to whom all scientists turn when they want to make that demarcation between a scientific theory and a non-scientific theory? Karl Popper, right, falsifiability. I'm not going to get into whether or not this is a sufficient demarcation. Uh, but nevertheless, it's one that all scientists who want to make this argument rely on. What, who was Karl Popper? He was a, a philosopher, philosopher, and he made the argument philosophically. Uh, so, you know, to help yourself to philosophical conclusions in order to argue uh, that, you know, philosophy is not necessary is just... It's not kosher. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing, of course, is you know to say that um, science is is discovering the nature of reality, and uh, you know we don't need philosophy. Philosophy prematurely, metaphysics, bad bad part, part of philosophy tried to discover the nature of philosophy, but uh, the nature of reality. But it's you know it's science that does that. Once again, to make the claim for scientific realism depends on very, very sophisticated work that has to be done in, in philosophy of science. So the scientific method, per se, by definition, deals with an assuming uh, naturalism, methodological na naturalism, ontological naturalism, that that's the, the only reality is the natural world. You have to argue for that, too. Uh, you two can two be, separate yeah, issues. One yeah. is the, the actual substance of the world, ontology, yeah. and the other yeah. is the methodological approach. Two, two separate things. Two very, very, and you can, you can, and, and have been, there are many uh, scientists who are not realists uh, about about the uh, physical, world. at the external world, the right. physical world. I mean, quantum mechanics is, the problems of quantum mechan mechanics have produced <laughs> so many uh, interesting points of view, and one of them uh, is, is idealism. I mean, things don't exist until we observe them, and, you know, the, the, uh, the particle has no position until it is observed. Many and, scientists would say that uh, 
people have taken quantum mechanics way out of its, uh, it, it, its reality in terms of using it to justify their own anti-realistic position or spiritualism or something well, like that. Um, and that yes. may be true, but again, these are philosophical These are philosophical, issues. and may I just say that Niels Bohr, <laughs> yeah. who was, you know, who was a scientist, who right. was, you know, one of the developers of quantum mechanics, oh, had a quite... Yeah. Idealist view about about uh, about reality, which right. he, you know, he he thought was the consequence of quantum mechanics. This kind of question: What is the consequence of a particular theory? We know the theory works; uh, it gives us predictions that are, have not yet been falsified. Um, but how do we make sense of the whole thing? What view of reality does it lead to? Um, does it, you know? Does it necessarily entail realism? Does it necessarily entail non-realism, as some have argued, mm, yeah. uh, even scientists? Mm. You're in the domain of, of philosophy then. Most of the people I know who argue for this kind of uh, the eliminative view of philosophy, that, that, that science is discovering the nature of reality, there is going to be no place for philosophy. First of all, don't understand that... Um, they are that philosophy does other things than trying to describe reality. I, I, I do believe that is the sphere of science. We have to depend on science. Science is this wonderful technique that we've worked out that um, acknowledges um, how wrong we get everything and gives reality a chance to answer us back when we're getting it wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you think fire is phlogiston, do you? <laughs> we'll just see about that. Oh, so you think uh, simultaneity is absolute? Well, we'll just see about that. That's what science does. So it gives us a, 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 a reality, a chance to get in on the conversation and mm -hmm. say, and correct us, you're wrong. And I think that's what we have to depend on in, in order to understand reality. Philosophy has other uses. Um, for example, what I just said, that was pure philosophy, right? Science can't give you that interpretation of, of science. That was philosophy. Uh, so that's my answer. <laughs>